Just west of downtown Miami, it's a rainy Florida night, and the roof is closed at Marlins Park. Tonight, game two of this three-game weekend series between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Miami Marlins. Stay tuned for Marlins baseball next. Odrisamer Despagne, the Cuban-born right-hander, will be on the mound to start. What do we need to know here, Danny? Hey, he wasn't particularly good in his last one. If you look at the line score, he only lasted four innings, took the loss. He'll really be hoping to turn in a much better performance in this one. Josh Harrison stands in. He'll get us started in this one under the lights. Tonight for Pittsburgh, second baseman, Josh Harrison. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. 0 oh, and 1 the count. Guys, this Marlins ball club as they begin play here tonight. They come in on the heels of a victory last time out, but they've been in a bad stretch recently, losing five of their last eight ball games. Yeah, Matty B. We're looking at a team right now. They're just playing some average baseball through four games of this homestand. They split it two and two, D Row, and I think they expect a little bit more. Yeah, and you don't want to be playing average baseball in front of your home fans. They need to find a way to win this game and, and, and try and take three out of the first five of this homestand. Here's the one and one delivery. Checks his swing here, but he does so in time. He would have had to go with the old school Tommy Hawk approach on that one if he wanted to get on top, but he was able to lay off it. Now the two one pitch. Even count, two balls and two strikes. That softly hit to right. Will that get down? And this will be put away easily for the out. A chance here to check out the starting lineup for the visiting Pirates. What's your take as they try to get back to their winning ways, Nero? Matty, this lineup's got to be willing to adjust. They cannot stay staunch and try and pull everything, or there will be a ton of ground ball and weak fly ball contact. They have to be willing to use line to line to get this done. And that'll bring in Adam Frazier looking for better results than last night when he went 0 for 4 in that one. Here's the first pitch to him. Yeah. Takes a fastball on the inside corner and set up behind the plate is Kenny Jansen as you see the rest of the umpiring crew there. Hey the book on Kenny Jansen D road not a very big zone but he will give you that low pitch below the knees. Yeah, and he's consistent. You're okay with that as an offensive player. He wants to give that pitch below the knees. If this pitcher can execute consistently, you better make the adjustment. Number 12 is there, and he Nine makes the third. catch for the out. The left fielder, number three, Sean Rodriguez. Set to get his evening at the plate started, Sean Rodriguez. And it's been a real struggle for him with the bat so far this year, looking to get things turned around in a hurry. And here's a fastball called for strike one. Hey, there's no waiting around trying to work this guy into deep counts and get into the bullpen. This is a mid 90s fastball guy who loves that pitch and is aggressive and comes right at you. I would assume the offense is going to have a similar approach. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. Thought he had the inside corner that time, but it missed for ball one. Now the 1 and 1 pitch. Chopped weakly to the left. Throw to first in plenty of time, and his side is retired. 1, 2, 3 go the Pirates. And now the Marlins will have a crack at things. No score. Chad Cool is on the mound for game two. What's your take on him, Dan? Hey, Matt, you know that fifth inning can be an awful demanding inning for a starting pitcher. It's kind of like Wednesday being the hump day during the day of the week. Every starter knows they have to go five innings to qualify for a win. He wasn't particularly good in his last one taking the loss, and I'm sure he's hoping for a much better fortune in this one today. Stepping in now is the leadoff man Cameron Mabin, as he'll get us started here in the home half of the first. Swinging a ball line softly down the left field line, but foul. Dero, Dan, we look at this Pirates ball club as they enter play here tonight. They've been mired in a team wide slump of late, as with the loss last time out, they've now dropped eight of their last nine decisions. 
Yeah, Maddie, this road trip's been a little bit of a struggle for this team. First four games, they find themselves one and three. Haven't played particularly well. They'll find a way to regroup. They have to find a way to play a little bit more fundamentally sound. Start there first. The wind up and the 0-2 pitch. Nope. And that sinker misses at the shoe tops. Ball one. Here's the one and two delivery. Fastball down near the shoe tops. Hey, I don't mind those pitches down below the zone trying to go for the strikeout right there. But you find yourself in a 2 2 count right here. Interested to see what he goes to. Fouled off. The 2 2 one more time is looked at, and the count moves full. There's Starlin Castro. He'll follow next. Now a flare out toward right center. Polanco coming on. He's there and records the first down. We have a moment here in Miami to take a look at the Marlins starting lineup. Who do you have your eye on, Dan? Well, I really like what Justin Bohr does for this team. Looking at his stats, I was really impressed with the fact that he's hit four bombs in his last ten games. Lately, he's been the guy to watch, and I think he's ready to do some more damage right now. Ready now for the Marlins, Starlin Castro. He's ready for his first at bat of this early season contest. Here's the pitch. And he lays off a pitch here that he probably shouldn't have. 0 and 1. Bases are empty, one man out. Now a fastball. Oh, strike three called on a pitch that looked inside. Instead, it's out number two. Well, that call looked like it was a little in the pitcher's favor, but it wasn't outrageous. Hey, listen, calling balls and strikes is a really tough job, and even the best are going to miss some from time to time, especially when they're sort of borderline like that last one. Not sure the hitter would want to hear that, though. Standing in now, Justin Bohr. He'll swing and lift a ball fouled off to the left and out of play. First cuts for him here with the bases open and two away. The 0 1. Nope. Lays off the sinker here, a ball and a strike. That one looked like it could easily have gone the other way. There's a big difference between 0 and 2 and 1 and 1. But now this next pitch probably becomes the biggest of the at bat. High and deep to right center. Loop low. Going back on it to the track. And it's gone. It's a solo shot for Justin Bourne. Home run number five on the year as the Marlins will take a one to nothing lead. Well, there's an old saying that the harder you throw, the farther it goes. How about this? Good fastball, and this ball is absolutely tattooed. See you later. Into the box, Tim Beckham. And he'll take a cold strike here on a borderline pitch at strike one. And he's looking to get it going. Off to a bit of a slow start this year. Wind up and the 0 1. And that one stayed too low apparently. Bases are empty here with two men out. And he lays off for a ball, 2 and 1. Into the windup, here's the 2 and 1 pitch. Ball even at 2 and 2. Here now the 2 2. Doesn't get the zone. Count full now. JT Real Muto would be next if they can keep this inning alive. Oh, 
got him swinging, and that will end the inning. The Marlins are on the board first, thanks to the solo home run. We'll head to the top of the second. Miami out to an early 1-0 lead. Next to bat will be the Pittsburgh cleanup batter, Josh Bell. He'll start things out in the top half of the second. Here's the pitch. Loop down towards short. And one gone. Check out the Miami Marlins on defense. Hey, let's focus on Cameron Maben in the outfield. One of the more dynamic outfielders in our sport. He's able to cover a ton of ground, gap to gap. I almost feel like he's playing left center to right center. He's not playing center field. He's got it all covered. Bailing the other guys out and not shabby with the offensive tool either. Here's Gregory Polanco. The lifetime history with Adrissimar Despagne. He's two for three. He's taken him deep once. First pitch of the at-bat. And he gets the call that time for strike number one. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. Swing and a little tapper. Foul ball, strike two. Two he misses with a fastball. Hey, I can understand why he wanted to elevate the fastball right there. This batter's eyes have been lit up since he stepped in the box. Let's see if he gets him fishing on something breaking in the dirt right here. This one's down to third. Two is left. Beckham. Throw gets him. Two down. Batting back. Very baseman. Here's Jordy Mercer now. He'll work on keeping this top of the second alive. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Fastball that just misses inside. Two out, nobody on. That's taken now, and it's 2 and 0 to the Pirates shortstop. Now the 2 1 pitch. Fouled away. The 2 2. Swung on, and he went fishing in the dirt. The throw to first is in time, and the inning is over. So they're held in check here this half of the inning. We'll go to the bottom half of inning number two. It's the Marlins 1 and the Pirates nothing. Into the box, JT Real Muto. It was a three hit effort from him last night, so he was a big part of that victory. Ready with the first pitch, here it comes. Q shot here out towards short, and one gone. Take a look at the Pittsburgh Pirates defensive lineup. And let's focus our attention on Josh Harrison. Basically your Swiss Army knife for a manager. The ability to play up the middle premium positions, also both corners, and carries a nice bat. Now at the plate, number 12. The average in the early season, not pretty for him, hovering in the 220s. Here's the first pitch to him. And this runs inside, and that looked like it got him pretty good. Oh, and that was a big mistake right there. This guy might be their best base stealing threat in the lineup, so now he's got a chance to move into scoring position without even putting the ball into play. And that'll bring in the multi-dimensional Lewis Brinson. He 
he's ready. Here's the first offering. A pitch out. The throw. And a good decision to pitch out that time as he is toast at second base. Well, they guessed right on the first pitch pitch out. Sometimes you have to wait a pitch or two in the at bat to try that, but they must have had a pretty good idea he was going to be on the move. The 1 0. Misses, ball two. Sometimes it can be difficult for a pitcher. You're facing a guy that's not known to be a big stick in the lineup. Sometimes the toughest thing is to be aggressive and throw strikes. That's right. Wait for your pitch. And he fouls this one off. Bases are empty here with two men out. Two, two and two now. Here now the 2 2 is taken ball three looked like he tried to elevate a fastball on that 2 2 pitch there but kind of overdid it with a pitch that high it's pretty easy to lay off if you're the hitter. Hit to short. Frazier comes up with it. Throw to first will get him easily, and the side is retired. Some of our nation's young minds and future leaders here in attendance. Yikes. More from the show. Saturday baseball following this message and a word from our local stations. So the next to the plate for Pittsburgh, Jordan Luplo. He's the number seven hitter, but he's leading off the third after the first six guys in the lineup have been retired in order. Yeah, it's been a great start to the guy on the mound. It'll be interesting to see if they can find a way to get to this guy before he really settles in. Let's go, Miami. First pitch on its way. Hit out towards second. And the Pirates have their first base hit. With that, the Buccos have their leadoff man aboard to kick off the inning. Hey, that was a well-executed pitch down and away. Sometimes you got to tip your hat to the offense. That's a nice piece of hit. Maybe not what he was looking for, but the result was there. Prior to the at bat, a check on first. And a low throw to first that bounces as he can't hang on. Into the box now, Ryan LaVarnway. As he'll look at a breaking ball that misses for ball one. He's ready for his first at bat of this early season contest. From the stretch. Just missed with a breaking ball. He's gone back to back with off speed stuff to start this AB, and neither has found the zone. He's trying to pitch him backwards. But that only works if you can get them for strikes. Now he'll probably have to challenge it. Hits this one hard the other way. And that's through for a hit. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now. Everybody's different coming out of spring training. Some guys get off to torrid starts. Some guys struggle. This is one that struggled. But maybe that single gets him going. Stepping in now, Chad Cool. And no surprise to see the pitcher squaring around as he gets this one down. And you can't ask for much more out of a pitcher than that. The sacrifice works to perfection. So stepping in, Josh Harrison, as he's got a chance to tie this ball game up with that equalizing run just 90 feet away at third. First delivery to him on the way. Takes a look down at the knees for a strike. Jumped ahead with strike one there, and that's something he's going to do a lot of in this start. He doesn't have lights out stuff, so it's important for him to be pitching ahead and have the hitters on their heels. On 
on its way. The 0 1 pitch lofted in the air out toward right center. Chasing after it is Mabin. He's there to make the catch, and here comes the runner from third as this should get him on the board. And the run will score on the sacrifice fly as that'll square things at 1 to 1. Great work to do a job right there. He's not a big power bat, so he was looking to get a fly ball to the outfield and give his guy a third a chance. Striding in once again, Adam Frazier. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. First pitch of the at bat on its way. No balls in one strike. Ready with the nothing in one pitch. Strike two at a pitch that catches the outside corner. Hey, down 0-2. He better be leery of this guy's nasty changeup. He has the ability to bury it down and away or down and in wherever he wants to. So you got to be on point with this one. Too high. One and two. Boy, it's hard to sit on an 0 2 fastball. I think that pitch just locked him up a bit. But lucky for him, it was just a little out of the zone. From the belt, kicks and deals. Tapped up the first baseline. And he'll step on the bag himself, and the inning is over. One in the inning for the Pirates on a couple of hits. We'll move on to the bottom of inning number three, all tied at one and one. And next to the plate will be J.T. Little. He drove in two of his club's three runs in last night's affair. He's ready. Here's the first offering. And there's one well above the zone for a ball. Fastball is in there. The 1 1. Popped him up. Mercer trying to get there, and he tracks it down. Nice play for the first down. And with that, we give you a look here at what's happening in the race in the National League Central. Ready now for the Marlins. Odrisamer Despagne as he'll get his first opportunity in this one. First pitch of the at bat. First pitch here is hit off to the right side and fouled. It's strike one. One out, nobody on. Hey. Fastball and he's quickly in the hole 0 and 2. A ball and two strikes to the Marlins pitcher. The one two is a sharp slider that bounces in the dirt. Man this at bat has changed quickly from 0 and 2 now to 2 and 2 a good job of plate discipline by this hitter not chasing those pitches just off the plate. The two two. Is laid off and the count runs full. Wow, from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2, and that last pitch on 2 and 2 wasn't even close. He had this guy in the ropes, but 
Now he led him right back into this at bat. Bases are empty, one man out. Good fight to that sinker as he gets him to swing through it for out number two. Now, I know he struck out there, but for a pitcher, that's a pretty solid at bat. Anytime you can make an opposing pitcher out there work and throw quite a few more extra pitches, that's a quality A-B in my book. Stepping in and ready for another shot, Cameron Maven. He flew out in his last at bat. Here comes the first pitch. And there's a sinker that he just spits on as it misses low. Kind of a surprise not to see a fastball in the first pitch there. The guy's probably taking at least one pitch to give his pitcher a chance to sit down after he already made the second out. The 1 0 home is looked at for the first strike. Maven is a player referred to as clutch by teammates, coaches, and of course the media. He seems to find himself in pressure situations often, and it's hard to find many instances where those moments have gotten the best of him. It just appears he really relishes the big spot. Frazier is right there. Throw on to first, gets him, and the side is retired. Miami down in order. We played three full. We're tied at one. Digging in to try it again, Sean Rodriguez. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. Sean Rodriguez. First offering on its way. Right over the middle, knee high. The wind up and the 0 1. And here's a curveball in the dirt that time for a ball. One and one. And mm, tough fastball to lay off on one and two, but he did, and it's two and two now. Now here's a drive out to right center field. Legs churning. He's headed for second. And he'll pull into second here with nobody out. Well it's always daunting to know that you've got to deal with the three four five hitters to start out an inning but even more so when the three hitter starts it out with a double. Yeah he's going to have to start making some good pitches to get out of this thing. Job number one is to get the next guy and ideally you keep him from advancing the runner to third with less than two outs. Josh Bell the next to hit hit it hard but lined out in his first at bat. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Here's a strike. You know, Matty, when I first broke into the league, you wouldn't see that high heater first pitch right out of the gate. But I think there's been a change in, in philosophy here. Back in the late 90s, early 2000s, guys wanted to attack you more east-west, get you leaning left-right. Now you're seeing guys attack in the philosophy more north-south. Just with launch angles and exit velocities, I think guys are afraid to throw that sink and fastball for fear that guys are just going to run their barrel into it. Not the case with the high fastball. Now Here's Gregory Polanco. He's 0 for 1 after grounding out in his only trip to the plate so far. He's set and the pitch. Takes a knee high fastball. Oh one pitch misses for ball one. Now the one and one pitch is taken for ball two. Rodriguez leads off second with one gun in the inning. Three balls and a strike to Gregory Polanco. Time for him to attack on the mound. He knows this team's struggling offensively. 
Don't mess around and try and nibble. Just be on the attack and let them beat you. Very weakly on the ground, but it gets fouled. A lot of times you see guys in the middle of the order get worked away, but not right here. They're keeping it inside on him. From the stretch. And strike three called on the outside corner. He's earned the right to live out there with the fastballs as that's out number two. It's never a good look to strike out looking, but it's way worse when you do it with a guy in scoring position. Those are the times you really want to see a guy battle and at least put the ball in play. Here's Jordy Mercer now. And she'll take a look at a high strike that time. It's nothing in one. Looking to put the ball in play here. He went down on strikes in his first at bat. Oh, one count. Here's the pitch. There's a knee high pitch that catches the zone. He certainly hasn't been the aggressor in this at bat. Two straight takes, so now we'll see if he can change his approach and battle up. Here comes the nothing and two pitch. And he struck him out. Second time tonight now that he's been set down on strikes. Back to back strikeouts keep him out of danger. We're back with more on this Saturday night after this. Here's Starlin Castro. He'll go to work trying to do something about breaking this 1 1 tie. Starlin. Astro. Here's the first pitch to him. Zero. Couldn't wait back. A swing and a miss. Missed with a slider. The 1-1 home. Misses for the second ball. The 2 1 home. Smoke toward third. Mercer is there. And the throw is wide as he couldn't keep his foot on the bag that time. And we'll have to see how they want to score that play. And this will go down as an E5 as you can see the exasperation on his face. Ready for another chance. Justin Bohr got a hold of one and went yard in his first appearance in this one. And that last at bat when he went deep, he turned around a pretty good fastball. So I'm kind of thinking this guy's a good fastball hitter. So I might want to move that ball up and down and in and out and try not to throw it right down the middle of the plate. And he lays off there 1 0. Now the 1 0. And it's fouled away. Lead off man aboard here in a 1 1 ball game. In the dirt. And he'll just beat the throw to second. He's in there. And on the play, the runner moves into scoring position now at second. To two balls and two strikes now. Two two he is swung on and missed he got him on strikes got him with a good high fastball there Danny we see a lot of that pitch in strikeout situations these days what makes it so effective I think Matt what makes it such a tough pitch is you're changing eye levels that fastball up looks so enticing to hit that you think you see that ball as a hitter do you think you can drive it but it's really hard to get on top of that good high hard fastball but quick hands over there at third as he takes it for the second out. Now batting. After. Digging in for his second at bat. JT Romuto hit it hard but lined out in his first at bat. First offering on its way. Here's a little chopper up the middle. 
Frazier ranges to his left. Throw on to first, and that error won't come back to haunt him after all as the inning is over. So it's no runs on no hits, one error, and a runner left stranded. We've played four full, all tied at one and one. So the next to the plate for Pittsburgh, Jordan Luplo. He'll start off the fifth in this one. First pitch on its way. And that one right down Main Street. Really feels like he's just on cruise control out there on the mound right now. Yeah, it really does, Matt, but this offense isn't helping him too much. It sort of feels like the next team to score is going to win this thing. And a change up here, but that's taken low in the dirt for a ball. The 1-1. One, one. It's a swinging bunt up the line. Beckham ranges to his right. And the fifth inning will start with a ground out, one away. Now batting, Catherine, Ryan LaVarnway. Up next for the Buckos, Ryan LaVarnway. He reached on a single in his first try. First pitch coming, here it is. And that pitch catches the inside corner. This guy's been on cruise control as we head into the middle innings of this one. And one of the big factors why, how about 80% of his first pitches have been for strikes? Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. And there's a pitch that just misses the inside corner. One out, nobody on. Hit high and deep to left field. Looking up is the left fielder still ranging back out of here into the visitors bullpen. A solo shot here to left second home run early in the year and it gives the Pirates a two to one lead. You think it's easy to be a pitcher at this level? Well, when the number eight hitter takes you deep, you know there's no such thing as an easy out. Standing in now, Chad Cool. Ball one. He did his job and laid down the successful sack bunt in his first appearance. The 1 0 home. A little bouncer. Foul ball, however, strike one. To short. Wiggle gathers it in. And there's out number two. The batter, number five. Second baseman. So the batting order turns over now and set to go Josh Harrison. It was an RBI sack fly for him last time through. First pitch of the at bat. A changeup that just catches the bottom of the zone for a strike. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. Grounder down the line at third. Uh, this will get foul for strike two. Here comes the nothing and two pitch. And they'll try and tempt him with one in the dirt, but he'll hold back here. It's one and two. Not a real good pitch there, 0 oh and 2. Probably not what he was trying to do with that fastball. He was trying to miss probably up and away, and he threw that one down into the dirt on an 0 2 pitch. Very rarely are you going to get hitters to chase an 0 2 fastball that's down in the dirt. A bouncer up the middle. Throw in the dirt, but a good scoop at first saves an error as this side is retired. One in the inning for the Pirates on this solo home run. Middle of the night here in Miami. It's now 2-1 to one Pittsburgh. Up next for Miami, number 12. As we move past the halfway point in this one and begin the bottom of the fifth. First pitch coming, here it is. 
Strike one to start the at bat. This one's blooped out toward right center field. And that's in there. Base hit. I'm shocked he got to that pitch right there. In today's game of loading up leg kicks, toe taps, dropping the hands, trying to create launch angle, that high heater usually gets by. And that'll bring in the multi-dimensional Lewis Brinson. No balls and a strike to count. Now the 0 1 lifted down the line and left Rodriguez giving chase he's got it one away. Standing in JT Riddle he's 0 for 1 thus far. He's set here it comes. The breaking ball that time in for a strike. Riddle playing here in his age 26 season. This is his second year as a major leaguer. Fifth inning, two to one our score. On its way, the 0 2 pitch. Swing and a miss on the fastball that time, out number two. In a double play situation, you kind of expect most pitches to be down to the zone, hoping for a ground ball. So that was an interesting pitch selection to go up in the zone. I think he caught him off guard a little bit. Into the box, Odrisimer Despagne, as the sinker to him finds the zone for strike one. He was a strikeout victim in his first try. Oh, one, here's the pitch. Slow little grounder, left side. He's got it. Throw in time, and the side is retired. Marlins leave one. They still trail it here, two to one. And that'll bring in Adam Frazier. Third trip to the plate for him here tonight. 0 for 2 at this point. First delivery to him on the way. This is hit softly to third. A leap, but he can't bring it down. Base hit. Hey, sometimes that's how a rally gets started right there. I know it's a soft liner, but leadoff man on usually poses problems. Ready for another shot now. Sean Rodriguez. He'll try to follow up the double in his last at bat with another big hit right here. First offering on its way. Swing and a miss just behind a lively fastball. Yeah, you attack the zone and get a swing and a miss that late on your first pitch fastball. Good chance he's coming right back with the same thing. He's ready. Here's the 0-1. Right over the middle, knee high. A couple of righties starting to loosen now in the bullpen. Two runs, five hits, and one error in the contest for the Pirates so far. A ball and two strikes to Sean Rodriguez. The one two. Curve ball bounces, and this one gets away. 
And forget about the double play now as he'll move up to second here on the wild pitch. That was definitely a two strike curveball there. The catcher turns his glove over and tries to make himself big to block it but with no luck. The ball skips away and it scored a wild pitch. Low scoring game thus far two to one here in the sixth. Off speed pitch in the dirt as he takes it for a ball. Wow this is a pretty good at bat right here from down in the count 0 and 2 to work the count back to 3 and 2 and he's seen a lot of pitches too. And he misses there for ball four so runners are at first and second now with nobody out. Two ways to look at this walk if you're the hitting coach you say that's a great A.B. down 0 2 and you work the walk but if you're a pitcher like me that's just a case of letting a guy off the hook and that can really frustrate you. Now the Marlin skipper is up out of the dugout on his way to the mound and a change is forthcoming as that's going to do it for his starter here this evening. He'll wind up lasting just five innings here didn't pitch all that poorly yet he's gone nonetheless. Your attention please. Now pitching for the Marlins. Number 48. Severino. John Sattler. Josh Bell will be his first test out of the bullpen and it'll be a tough test indeed as he'll face him with two on and nobody out here. From the stretch here's the pitch and that one just missed outside. Heading out towards shallow right Mabin is there. Makes the play one away. Digging in once again, Gregory Polanco. It's been an 0 for 2 effort for him to this point. Here's the first pitch to him. And a fastball just below the knees, ball one. Ball just a bit up. Great chance right here as a hitter to be aggressive. You can pretty much count on a pitcher. He's trying to get back in the strike zone. And with two guys on base right here, it's time to grip it and rip it. Now the 2 0. Now here's one hit in the air to the right side, but this is back into the seats of foul ball. He's gone, he's gone. And a double steal try here. Hit hard up the middle. And there are two away now. How about it? Third baseman. Digging in. Jordy Mercer, 0 for 2 from him so far in this one. Looking to keep this a one run game, the pitch. A ball and no strikes. Here comes the 1 0. Takes a look down at the knees for a strike. Frazier, the runner at third. Rodriguez at second with two gone. Leaps and makes a terrific catch. And with that, the side is retired. Another look as he goes way up to get that one at short. Back with more on this fine Saturday night following this. Here's Cameron Mabin now. He'll start things out in the sixth for a lineup that really hasn't found its groove in this one. Yeah, only two hits so far, Matt, and not very many hard hit balls either. We'll see if they can start making some adjustments. First offering on its way. 
A high fastball is in there. The wind up and the 0 1. That's over, but low, it's a ball and a strike. Softly hit to the left side. And he's set down one away. No matter, number 13, second baseman, Carlin Castro. Ready once again, Starlin Castro. 0 for 2 on his line thus far. First pitch on its way. And that one stayed too low, apparently. The wind up and the 1 0 pitch. Chopper foul. One run, two hits, and no errors in the game for the Marlins. And I believe they'll say he broke the plane as yes, he did. It's ruled a strike. And the slider gets him swinging, two gone. Made pretty quick work of him right there, setting him down on only four pitches. And what I liked about all of those pitches was they were down around the knees or lower. Pretty hard to do any kind of damage when pitches are located in that spot. In now, Justin Bohr. As he lines it hard to the right side, but out of play. A hit in two at bats for him at this point in the ballgame. Lifted the other way down the left field line. And that will end up a foul ball. Nothing in two count and the pitch. And he struck him out his seventh of the ball game and that ends the inning one two three go the Marlins our score remains two to one welcome back to South Florida it's on to the seventh inning with the Pirates leading in this one but before the inning gets underway let's check out the game summary to this point. Your attention, please. Now pitching for the Marlins, number 71, Drew Beckenbacher. Settling in now, Jordan Luplo. He was retired via the ground ball last time up. First pitch coming. Here it is. Up around the face. with a slider this at bat sets up really good right here right hasn't seen a fastball yet but now he gets to count at two balls and no strikes he has to be looking for a fastball right here ready with the 2 0 high in the air down the right field line but this will wind up being a foul ball classic change of speeds right there threw the hitters timing off got a late foul ball interested to see where he goes now oh not cheated on that one it's two and two I can't imagine he was sitting on fastball at his neck right there he is going to have to lower his sights if he's going to have any chance Go. Sweet. here's one that misses inside and the counts run full now three and two time to focus here this game is way too close to be walking guys so we'll see if he can make him swing the bat on this next pitch the three two pitch it's a high fly ball headed for the left field corner if it stays fair it's gone nearly a big fly to start the inning instead of foul ball. Another full count pitch home. Now the fastball is right by him as he swings and misses for the first out of the inning. 
Nice job there taking care of the leadoff hitter via the strikeout. I'll tell you, in a one-run game, especially this late, getting that first guy in the inning is so important. It changes the whole complexion of the inning, so that was a big out. Ryan LaVarnway will stand in yet again as we flash you back to the middle inning. This was a turning point here, a solo home run that was really one of the key at-bats of the ball game to this point. First pitch of the at bat on its way. And a fastball just a bit high. The 1 0 delivery takes a knee high fastball. The 1 1 home is looked at for ball number two. This one's down to third. Beckham takes it in. Throw got him, and that's a gorgeous play. Now better. Chad Cool. So here now is the pitcher, Chad Cool. He was a ground out victim last time up. Come on now. Here's the pitch. And he throws the fastball by him here. 0 and 1. He's going to need to shorten up and get that foot down a little bit earlier if he hopes to be catching up to that fastball. We're in the seventh inning now of a pitcher's duel. 2 to 1 our score. And that misses 1 and 1. The 1 1 home. Count moves to a ball and two strikes now. The one two. This is flared out towards second. Throw to first in plenty of time and the side is retired. Down in order go the Pirates. They still lead it two to one. So here's the cleanup hitter for Miami, Tim Beckham. He's batting cleanup in this one, but will get us started here in the inning as they look to wake up the bats. Yeah, not much to get excited about with just a single notch on the scoreboard, but you have to give credit to where it's deserved. The pitching on the other side has been really impressive. First offering on its way. No balls in one strike. The 0 1. And he misses with it 1 and 1. These guys have got to be frustrated as an offensive unit so far in this one. They haven't been able to crack the code on their opponent, but it's not like they're getting great pitches to hit either. This starter has kept the ball on the corners of the zone all game long. And this one runs a little too far in, ball two. And some action now in the Pirates' bullpen. They've got a lefty and a right-hander up to throw. Can do it. Now the 2-1. Doesn't hit the target. It's ball three. He's been throwing strikes all day, so you're not up at the plate thinking he's going to walk you in this situation. You need to be aggressive and sit hard at the plate. Ready on three and one. Here it comes. Fastball hit on the ground is short. And a good throw gets him one gone. Up next for the Marlins. Into the box now. JT Real Muto. He was retired via the ground ball last time up. On its way is pitch number 75. Round ball foul down the left side. All right, that's when you got to tell yourself to slow down a little bit right there. Out in front on a fastball, hit it hard, but pulled it foul. Behind 0 and 2 now. Popped him up. 
Lavarnway over to his right. Two down. Now batter, number 12. Digging in and looking for more, number 12. He singled his last time up. First pitch coming, here it is. Here's a sinker to start him out, but he wouldn't bite. It's ball one. Two out, nobody on. Just a tick behind for a strike. That is such a tough pitch to lay off right there, but you have to find a way. There's nothing you're going to do with that low sinker except foul it into your shin or hit a ground ball to the left side. The one two. Lifted the other way to left center. Calling for it, Rodriguez makes the catch, and that'll retire the side. Miami down in order. They're down 2-1. Junichi Tazawa has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. So the lineup flips over and digging in, Josh Harrison. He'll start things out for us here in inning number eight. The pitch. And he'll take strike one on the fastball, registering at 93 that time. 0 oh and 1 count, and the pitch. That misses wide. One ball and one strike. Now the 1 and 1 pitch is a fastball that misses. The 2 1. Hit sharply, but foul down the right side. The 2 2 pitch. Fastball called, strike three, and there's the first out of the inning. People always talk about how important getting the leadoff men on base is, and, and it's true. So in the eighth inning of a one-run game, that's a really nice job of attacking a hitter and sending him packing. Digging in and looking for more, Adam Frazier. He's got a hit in three at-bats to this point. First pitch of the at-bat. And now a slider in on the hands, and he's lucky that one didn't come and get him. Ooh, that pitch was up and in. That's one of those pitchers' purpose pitches, right? Fastball, something hard up and in. Now he can go down and away if he'd like. Here's a swing and a miss, one and one. Marlins have some action in the bullpen now as a right-hander is up and throwing. And he misses two and one. The two one home. Lifted in the air out towards left center. Number 12 is there and he makes the catch for the out. Ready for another chance. Sean Rodriguez. Previously against Junichi Tozawa. He's a 333 hitter. From the stretch. And there's one well above the zone for a ball. Tozawa, originally from Japan, of course. His contract is set to expire at the end of this season, so he may end up hitting the market this winter. Some guys only get to free agency one time in their career. This guy has a chance to get there for a second time and in the prime of his career. Is he able to handle the pressure as he plays out this final season? Shot towards second. Leaps and makes a terrific catch. And with that, the side is retired. 
A ball ticketed for right center, but the ticket is revoked as he goes up to pull this one down. More from the show, Saturday Baseball, following this message and a word from our local station. Your attention, please. Now pitching for the Pirates, number 70, George Johnson. And that'll bring in the multi-dimensional Lewis Brinson. Oh, for two for him to this point. Lewis Brinson. Third baseman hugging the line here. Now the first pitch. In there for strike one, 0 oh and 1. Come on. Hit the other way out toward right field. Polanco has a read on it, looks it into his glove, and there's one gone. So with his day over now, you get a look at the final pitching line for the Pittsburgh starter. And he was really in command on the mound throughout the evening. Ready for another shot now, JT Riddle. He was sat down on strikes in his last at bat. Ready with the first pitch, here it comes. Lifted down the line and left. And they can't run it down. Swinging a ball line softly down the line and right. And that is down as that could be two bases. The throw into second. Not in time. And he's in there with a double. Finally, a little something for them to get excited about. Yeah, a rally can begin with a single swing of the bat, and this might be their chance right here. They struggled to produce a lot of runs, but there he is at second base. A shot to the outfield scores it. Then who knows what kind of roll they could get on. Got to take it one good at bat at a time. Derek Dietrich come on to pinch hit here in a big spot. Derek Dietrich. strike there 0 and 1 in his career Dietrich hits in the 240s so there's room for improvement in that regard you know Matty I know his career batting average jumps off at the page but this guy can help the roster in a lot of different ways he brings value to the manager on a daily basis lifted in the air to straightaway center Luplo moves over and he makes the catch for the second out Here's Cameron Maben now. It's been a rough go of things at the plate for him so far, but his guys are looking for him to change that right here. Yeah, nothing better than coming through for the boys in a tight game, Matt, especially when you're kind of due to do something productive. to hold the lead here's the delivery fouled off riddle at second with two down fouled away That misses one and two. The one two is a slider taken for a ball. Pitch is taken high and away to fill the count. It's three and two. Got to be frustrating for the guy out on the mound. Trying to get out of this inning. Had him down 0-2. Now he's worked the count back full. Still one pitch away from sitting in the dugout. Now the payoff pitch home. He swung on and missed. He got him on strikes. 
So no runs on a hit here, no errors, one man left on. We've played eight full. It's the Pirates two and the Marlins one. Back now under the roof at Marlins Park as we get a look outside at the bright lights of Miami. Kyle Bearclaw enters from the pen to start the ninth inning as he'll try to keep the score right where it is heading to the bottom of the ninth. Riding in once again, Josh Bell. It was a flyout for him in his last trip. He's ready. Here's the first offering. A little late on this one as it's lifted the other way down the left field line. Number 12 will get there with ease as he puts it away for out number one. Now back. Right Here's Gregory Polanco. He's hitless in three at bats to this point. Here's the first pitch to him. A swing and a miss on a ball that jammed him. Action in the bullpen now as a right hander begins to throw out there. And that's in there as well. 0 oh, and 2 now. One run game here in the top of the ninth. Popped him up. Beckham waits on it and he brings it in for the second out of the inning. Up next for Digging in to try it again. Jordy Mercer 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts for him to this point in the ball game. First offering on its way. Leaves a change up high for a strike. Oh, one count. Here's the pitch. Looking at a tough pitch called a strike. Bear claw, or Bear for short. He was selected in the seventh round during the first year player draft of 2012. Man, coming out of the late rounds, you have to grind for everything. Nothing is given to you. And this guy has turned himself into a very solid. And we'll have to leave it there as this is strike three, and that will retire the side. One, two, three, go the Pirates. And they're unable to add to their two to one lead. Felipe Rivero takes the ball now in inning number nine, looking to close the door. Here's Starlin Castro, who could really use a knock here 0 for 3 in the game so far. First pitch of the at bat on its way. There's a strike. Boy, good nope. bite on the slider, and it just missed inside. Pretty good pitch and a great take there. There's not a lot you could do with that slider breaking down and unless you can catch it way out front and hook it down the line. You see a lot of swinging misses on those. Helping him out here as he swings and misses to fall behind a ball in two strikes. Not too often do you see a changeup come across at 88 miles an hour on the gun. Still effective. When you're throwing a fastball in the high 90s, though. Made a miss on the off-speed pitch that time. Starlin Castro was sent packing for the first out in the bottom of the ninth. Ready once again, Justin Bohr. In prior matchups with Felipe Rivero, he's one for two. Infield shifted well to the right. Here's the first pitch. Lefty versus lefty, and the first pitch misses for ball one. 1-0 home. 
runs a bit inside for a ball. Rivero is one of those guys that just seems to be at his best under pressure. Runners in scoring position, tight game, tough hitters at the plate. That's when he's at his best. One of the keys, Matty V, to being a good reliever is being able to pitch out of trouble. Trouble that's created by the pitchers before you, or sometimes you even have some mess that you put on yourself. Hey, regardless if it's a mess that he's inherited or one that he's created for himself, this guy makes good pitches when the game's on the line. Swinging away there, it's three and one. Hey, this pitcher better watch himself right here. The way this guy's swinging, he's got aggressive things on his mind. Let's go one more time, baby. The three-one, and he lays off ball four. So now the potential time run here is aboard late in the game. Time called here as with the potential time run aboard, they'll make the move to get a little more speed out there. Number fifteen, Ryan. So here's the cleanup hitter for Miami, Tim Beckham. He'll be looking for something he could drive into the gap and drive home that tying run from first. Get him over. Here he goes, Tim. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. There's a changeup over the outside corner. Hey, when one of your better pitches is the straight changeup, you can't be afraid to throw it at any count and at any time. And hey, first pitch, if they're going to take it for strike one, they're going to give it to you. Go ahead and throw it. I'm set with the 0 and 1. Ball one. Set. Here comes the 1 1. On the run, this one in on him, and he can't connect, so he finds himself down 1 and 2 now. I'll tell you, he just doesn't look comfortable in the box to me tonight. He's been off balance with his swings, and that one completely tied him up. Ready to deliver the 1 and 2. In front of the change up there is this is chopped foul at home plate. Working for the punch out and the offering. And here's a change up in there for a called third strike. And that's the second out of the inning. Well, this pitching staff has done a pretty good job right there. That's the fourth time he struck out. And we're only in the second game of this series. Into the box now, JT Real Muto. As the first pitch to him runs a bit inside for ball one. In his last at bat, he popped out in foul ground. Now the 1 0. And he lays off a fastball here that looked pretty good, but it's 2 0. Here comes the 2-0 pitch. Right on the corner, a fastball that he takes for a strike. That pitch is in triple digits. I think he had to take that one because I'm not even sure he saw it. Now the 2-1 pitch. And this will be a called strike two. And trouble now as they're down to their final strike tonight. Probably better that he let that pitch go anyway. After seeing a lively fastball in the pitch before, it's pretty hard to sit back enough on a well thrown changeup. Miami down to their last strike. Now a swing and a ground ball. This should do it. Throw to first will be in time for the final out, and the Pirates will put an end to their three game skid as this ball game is over. Well, as a former pitcher, you know I love these low-scoring games as opposed to those slugfests. 
This was like a throwback game when home runs weren't so common and pitching was really dominant. No complaints here. Close one tonight, two to one, the final score. The Buckos used a nice fifth inning to take the lead and they never gave it back. Chad Cool earns his first win of the season as he finishes seven innings with only two hits allowed. Felipe Rivera closes the door for the save, his third of the campaign. So that'll just about do it. For Mark DeRosa, Dan Fleezak, and our entire crew, I'm Matt Vaskersian. This has been a presentation of MLB The Show. For more, don't forget to check out theshownation.com.